Beep! The sand is too hot! Beep! Beep complained as the guild marched through the streets of Heft. Unacceptable! Please allow me to take you in my arms, Gustafsson said. Beep beeped her approval and was whisked away to the guild's old house in the high town. Bad Green's such a charmer, Nuke said. Maybe. Nothing on you, though, eh? Izumi replied. Course not. I'm the real deal. <laughs> At least I have been since I met you. It's like I finally know what all that stuff is about. <laughs> Nuke was cut short by an incredible retching. No, he wasn't that averse to romance. It was just that he had opened the door to the skimmer stable. The dense gases erupted out like a thousand worms jumping into your orifices. Ah, I wonder if the palace staff have been cleaning up as I asked, Watson said. Then a creature emerged from the doorway, a zombie-like figure shuffling on blackened feet with eyes ringed by shattered skin. The Parin, the Jidin, the end, he said, rolling out into the street. Well, if they're purring and shidding, they're still alive. Nice, Nuke nodded. Indeed, the stable was full of big, strong skimmers, battery farmed to perfection. Watson dragged the servant back to the palace, while Nuke and Els began leading all the skimmers out into the street. The locals were not entirely pleased with the sight of their mortal enemies being not just at the gates but within them. However, Nuke lied to them extensively about how he had the situation under control, and these days the young prince had a certain air of legitimacy about him. This was mainly at the behest of his father, who didn't make any appearance to see this new imperial army off. The samurai say he has created a burrow in the throne room, Watson reported. I'm afraid he contests it very aggressively, so no one dares to dig him out. And the cuboids have proven to be a fine construction material, it seems. Okay, that sounds like Dad, but that's still an improvement, I think, Nuke said. Guess we better give him something to come out of his hashish hole for. Operation Skim to Win begins now. All Scroops, move out! Scroops, my prince. Skimmer troops, keep up, come on. Can I be a scroop? Els asked. Charlie, you were always a scroop, Nuke assured him. Nuke, I just want to say that this is the worst thing we've done so far, Izumi said. Is this the crabs thing again? You just don't like skimmers. No, I don't like... Are there people who like skimmers? These skimmers are nice. You'll like them when you get to know them. But you haven't got to know them. Oh yeah? Look, this one here, she's called Makise. She's determined to achieve great discoveries out there in the world, just like you. She's a huge man-eating grub. Come on, sister. I ain't even gonna say anything. Just don't let your guard down like that, all right? Rick commented. Now let's get this dumbass shit out of the way so we can go do radioactive weed in your dad's attic. That night, the Grand Army of the Empire went forth to rid the world of evil. Or they walked about ten meters down the street, then found that their gangly skimmers were more interested in scritching around in the sand than going wherever those humans were off to. Oi, Nadeshko, come on, all of you, look, chalky on a stick, chalky on a stick, mmm, tastes like ochronite, walkies time, Nuke was shouting as he ran back and forth. After several hours, all the skimmers were at least out of the city, bringing great relief to the sleepless residents within. The desert was easier going, being the skimmer's native turf. However, to get to the forward base at the hub, they needed to cross all kinds of rocky, arid, dusty and dirty terrain. Might not sound too different to a desert, but skimmers are mighty fussy. Beep! They all think that the ground is too hot! Beep! Beep said during a particularly large skim train breakdown around Trader's Edge. Wait, 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 are you magic with the skimmers too? Nuke asked. Can you not smell it? My beautiful queen, please forgive the young flesh, Gustafsson said. These humans do not feel anything. They cannot associate with outer life and can sparsely manage more than one of their own kind. The manner in which the prince and princess associate is unbearable. Man, thanks for the review, but does your queen have some insight or not? Nuke said. It is simple. The ground is too hot! Beep! Beep insisted. 
Alright, let's cool it down then. Everyone get on your knees and start blowing, Nuke shouted. Now that's good flirting, straight to the point, Rick nodded as the Mangaka class scribbled away furiously. You must uplift, Gustafsson said. Raise them up and feel the bodies of the beasts in your hands. This is the meaning of physical feeling. Hey Agnew, remember that theory that the degeneracy parasite originated in hivers? Is this that shit again? Rick said. Yep. Agnew agreed. After much back and forth, Gustafsson's handsy plan was the only way forward. The guild had to collectively carry the skimmers like backpacks, Keep in mind that a skimmer's body alone is twice the size of a human. While everyone puzzled over how to actually achieve this, Rick took Nuke aside. Man, deadlands are coming up. Now I ain't exactly itching to go back after 2000 years in that open air slammer, but there's some stuff there that we usually don't tell the fleshies about, but maybe you deserve the good stuff, I think. You're helping us out. Let me show you some shit. Leave your erotic historian crew to cover the skimmer wrestling and follow me. Rick and Nuke snuck off from a horrific scene, which we'll get back to, and ran up a hill to the west. Down the other side was the Deadlands, and after a quick sprint through the acid rain, which Rick did his best to pretend was hurting, they were back in Black Desert City all of a sudden. Stopping in the bar, Rick pointed at a rusty skeleton milling about in the corner. First, you better ask her about the stuff the greasy sister's been after. Carlo there's our resident remembering stuff expert. Real good at getting just the right stuff loaded up for that, you know, the bad stuff being there. Sure. Carlo, you want to view my history manga, tell me if it's all accurate and stuff. That'll be 100,000 stacks, bucko, Carlo wheezed. Told you it's not just me who's like that, Rick added. Uh, I don't know, what's that 100k get me? Nuke asked. I know you, Nuke Tashino, trying to ruin it all, ruining my gig. Tell you what, you can buy me out. 500k's and I'll memory dump my shit all over what you got and stuff. If you got an AI core that can handle truth, that is. Uh, well, we got this guy called... Hammer bro or something. They're sordid, Carlo. Dark days are numbered. This guy's girlfriend's pimp worked out how to make an AI core from scratch. Girlfriend? Uh, you fleshies are so darn weird. Well, then you aren't gonna like my manga, so never mind. Sorry, Carlo, don't have your money. Then you run on and get it. To prove I'm serious, here's a freebie. Recipe for cornflakes. It's a breakfast cereal. It's pronounced Cariel. Damn, that's dumbs you can't get at any price. Get out of here, both of you. Perhaps Carlo did have something to contribute to the guild, but only for the right price, and half a million flakes wasn't it. Nuke and Rick were about to leave, but another skeleton, with three eyes and a long V face, hailed them down. General Rick, why in the name of Stobe are you dressed as a fleshy? And moreover, where the fuck have you been? You missed the last 20 rounds of wacky backgammon, and with a getup like that, I bet you'd have won. Been doing weird stuff, kinda good. This is Nuke, one of the human rulers. Human ruler? Human rulers live and die in the blink of a defrag. Only wacky BG is forever, so sit down and get freaky with me, General. On business, buster. This guy's sad Neil, real piece of shit, Rick said to Nuke. Sad Neil. Doesn't sound sad, Nuke said. There ain't a happy skeleton in the world. And how am I meant to be happy? I got a fever, and the only cure is more wacky backgammon. Sad man, you want to come help the fleshies kill the Akronites with a load of skimmers? Rick asked. What the fuck is an Akronite or a skimmer? Oh yeah, you don't get out much. Basically, it's some bullshit, but it's gonna be funny. Come on, it ain't that bad out there. Better than it was when we got thrown in here, tell you that. And so, Rick dragged another skeleton out of Black Desert City. Then he showed Nuke a little secret door in the ruins beside the city, 
which revealed a ramp to a hidden warehouse. The place was full of Second Empire stuff, including pristine, flashy hunting tools and books in their original packaging. Quinn, see this guy here? Rick said to one of the skeletons standing by the piles. General, the fuck you playing at? came the reply. Something special. Calm your jets, ID ping's the same. Anyway, this guy's on the list, right? Have you been doing biological stuff with him? Oh yeah, loads of it. Try opening one of these books sometime and you'll see it's all good fun. Quartermaster Quinn disagreed, but the exchange led to Nuke buying up a few choice pieces of old tat, including some maps of the old Second Empire for the researchers to slobber over. Finally, they returned east to the Grey Desert, where the guild had just about found a workaround to the skimmer issues. Where the fuck have you been? Izumi said. We were just round the corner, comparing sticks, you know. This is the adjudicator, Neil, Rick said. General, what the fog is that? Neil said, gesturing to Els. It's a living egg creature, don't touch it. And what the fog is that? He said, pointing at Elena now. It's an enforcer, except they're called Shek now. Why is it not killing the humans then? Different times, bucko. Everything different. Except you still gotta do what I say, so help these kind freaks carry these skimmers over to the hub. Up the hill from where the rat run used to be. Right. Hello, Neil. Uh, so we've got the skimmers asleep with a choco bread overdose. Just gotta drag them with us, I guess. That's the best we could do, Izumi said. And the best it can be. Nice one, Izzy. Present for you. Nuke said, handing over the Black Desert Warehouse goodies. Oh. Ooh, nice! And I thought you really were comparing sticks. Now the guild was truly on the warpath. A great mass of intoxicated, limp-limbed skimmers was dragged across Venge during the calm night. It was a great ball of creature, inching forwards like some cosmic horror. A delicious, delicious cosmic horror. Or so thought, the army of bandits waiting beside the road into the border zone. Ish, the legendary lumpy scrumpy frumpy, the beast of yeast, the otherworldly power of mange free flower, the creature that rises to eat ah, let's get this bread, the bandit leader proclaimed. Somehow, this convinced his followers to attack the horrible homunculus, or perhaps they were just confident in their overwhelming numbers. But alas, pushing their way inside the blob only revealed the famous guild, and while it was easy to push the exhausted members over in the messy marsh, the whole uproar woke some of the skimmers up. Scientifically, there was no way of knowing who they would try to eat in this scenario, but miraculously, they went for the skin and bones bandits instead of the meaty guild. Was this the work of superluminal millipedes as well? There was really no other explanation. And so, this brief battle ended in the slaughter of the assailing ne'er-do-wells, and a solid early proof that, indeed, to win, you need only skim. After another day of hard hauling, the skimmer ball squeezed through the gates to the hub. The thousand guardians were already camped out beside it. My, 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 I was expecting so much less, and yet so much more, Isaiah commented. Your turn to carry it. Sandor said, collapsing into the dirt. Yes, most were in no condition to go on, so they spent a couple of nights in the hub. The next chapter of Gas Girl and the Four Ethical Princes was coming along nicely, with a great monologue on the value of machine well-being delivered from within a steamy shower to a blushing Gas Girl who had, due to entirely innocent circumstances, become trapped in the laundry basket beneath the shower user's underwear but who modelled for them to get those shower shots so in proportion and perspective? History will never know. At last the big day arrived, and the ball was mobile once again, more comfortably this time on account of the big strong Shek. The Holy Nation was just a couple of hours walk to the north, and had not so much as a lookout to stop them. They quickly reached the centrepiece of the Holy Nation's southern reaches, the fortified city of Stack. It lay between two huge mesas to the north and south, and thick walls to the west and east, lined with crossbows and crawling with guards. 
Inside was the headquarters of the Holy Inquisition, the elite force of the nation's army, doubling as its not very secret secret police. Perhaps they weren't expecting an attack, but that didn't mean it would be easy. The guild formed up on the plains outside the eastern gate. These plains were dotted with wrecks from the wars of the First and Second Empires. A bad omen, but for which side? While Els roused all the skimmers with a method known only to himself, the others discussed their options. Our skimmers give us quite the advantage out here, where they can merrily skim around all they like, Isaiah said. We should try to get the Ocranites to come out. But those crossbows on the walls, we can't go near enough to get their attention without endangering the animals, Elena added. So we need to do the impossible, Nuke said. We need to draw them out, but we can't let anything valuable get too close to the walls. Wadston! Wadston answered the call, and in a flash was dressed in Nuke's Holy Nation soldier outfit. See, the thing was, my man, I couldn't do the voice. You can do it, right? Nuke said. I worry that I cannot, he said. No worries. <laughs> That's all you need, right? Just keep saying, no worries, like I did. Try it. No worries. How is that? Perfect. Plus, you're as pale as Garu milk. They won't suspect a thing. Go invite them to our Barbie. I will do my best, my prince, Watson said. With a gulp, he set off towards the city, thinking of his many duties to his prince and empire. What's that with you? Lost on patrol? A guard said to him as he arrived at the gate. Uh, no worries, Watson said. Oh, yeah, no worries, mate, the guard nodded. Yeah, no worries, no worries, mate, can't be any worries, the other guards said. And Watson was in. How did that work? Azumi muttered, watching from afar. Don't underestimate the old man, is he? Where there's a Wadston, there's a way, Nuke said. Beyond the wall were tightly packed streets, lined with buildings in much the same style as the Empire. After all, the Holy Nation had sprung from the Second Empire just as the Third Empire had. But the huge barrack, lined with countless banners, stuck out. Wadston approached to peek inside, confirming that it was packed with soldiers but his poking head attracted some attention. There you are, at last. Give your report, a voice bellowed. Wadston had no choice but to enter. Just inside the door was a throne of sorts, on which sat a big man in blood-red armor. It was the Holy Nation General, High Inquisitor Setter. So what's all this about an attack? Is your company not capable of holding one bloody mine? Setter asked. Ah, uh, sorry. Wadston said. Sorry, you can't just fucking apologize without saying the prayer. Go on. Of course. No worries. And the second line? Second. No worries, might. Praise Alcren. Your voice sounds a bit strange. Something wrong there. No worries. Yeah, no worries. All right. So what are we going to do about these filthy Imperials, huh? Did you see that stupid guild thing we've been hearing about? No. Ah, shame. So how do you feel about our prospects out there? Worries. Bugger. Fucking she-devil worshippers they are. Not like in here. We appreciate a manly man. And you, little runner, have earned yourself a reward. Saying this, Setter stood from the throne and put his hands on Wadston's waist. So fragile, but not an ounce of femoid on ya. Ocran's dream he whispered. It was at this point that poor Wadston's nerve broke. He legged it right out of the door before anyone knew what was up, but Setter quickly gave chase. Little sprites are runner, let's work up a sweat then mates, he called. The guards and soldiers of the barrack joined the pursuit, racing out of the city towards the high road to the east. There the guild lay in wait beneath a shallow ridge, or in theory they did, for the skimmer purrs had been echoing around the dry veil for a while already, and the guild were hence already in battle with Holy Nation troops and slavers when Wadston barreled over the ridge. The skimmers were happy to have some fresh meat, almost as happy as Setter was. Was being the key term, for when he saw the horde of strange foreign beasts emerge in his path, he lost his appetite for nymphish older gentlemen almost at once. Almost. 
The skimmers made short work of the Holy Nation troops and pushed off the road towards the city. However, Seta himself was a force to be reckoned with. Swinging a huge two-handed sword around, he smashed weapons aside and cut deep into skimmer flesh. Then again, when you're surrounded by twenty teethy terrors, one mistake can cost you dearly. Ah, oh, shit! You bit my fucking arm off, you bogan! Seta raged as a skimmer scurried away with its prize. Undeterred, he flailed on. Dirt chugging harlots, ravenous beasts, servants of the oppressors, godless insects, and worst of all, traitor machines! I'll kill you all! Don't forget, new men, that's a thing now too, Rick added. Seta's lofty ambitions were not to be, for finally he fell, his armor more tooth-hole than not. This victory was tainted though. Oh, so tainted. Where's my man? Nuke said. He's out there, Izumi said, pointing to the city. A few Naish troops had escaped and taken Wadston with them. Perhaps they wanted to see what the fuss was all about. Fuck, Wadston, we've got to save him. Wait, Prince Tashido. Those archers won't miss a skimmer if we get too close, Isaiah cautioned. What, you want to leave him in there? Oh no, I think you underestimate the fellow. Wadston came to inside the Holy Nation barrack. Around him were the iron bars of a cage, but by the grace of Okren, he was not there to dance for the femoid haters. He was just a slave, and in the modern era that's only about as inconvenient as having to renew your driver's license. Wadston quickly slapped together a splint to ease a leg sprain, and picked the cage lock with the arm of his glasses. Those lessons back in the Heft Shinobi School, which had seemed such a poor investment at the time, continued to pay dividends even when the guild wasn't stealing everything they saw. Okren is a false god whose nature is increasingly understood by scholars to be merely allegorical, he shouted as he burst from the cage and barrack and raced for the gate. While I respect your opinion, I wish to provide a counter-argument that I consider to be of more weight than the material speculations of scholars unfamiliar with theological principles," a soldier claimed. He wanted to provide that counter-argument so much that he riled up another posse of paladins and fell right into the guild's trap. They got skimmed, and the guild winned. Seriously, we got like a thousand of them, Nuke said. Not quite, my prince, Watson said. They still possess companies of sentinel warriors guarding the city districts and the gates. Perhaps we have done enough. We haven't done enough until we've torn down those banners and freed everyone inside, Isaiah said. Don't like our chances against those walls, though, Izumi said. Wait an hour. It'll be dark. Skimmers see perfectly well at night. Trust me, Sandor said. Just after 10pm, the guards on the wall heard a strange pattering. You hearing something? One said. Yeah, hearing something, said another. Think's bad? Nah. Nah. Nah, no worries. Yeah, no worries. Nah, no worries. Yeah, no worries. Then a skimmer vaulted up on the wall and bit the first guy's head off. All right, calm down, the second guy advised the new arrival, but he was soon soaring through the air into the crawling shadows of the narrow streets below. The skimmers were in. Thousand Guardians, we've captured their commander. Now we capture their city. Take revenge for their crusades. Attack! Isaiah shouted. Within minutes, the whole city was filled with clamor and action. Skimmers squeezed through alleys, and the guild burst into the storehouses, armories, and slave quarters. Strangely, though, there were no workers or slaves to be seen. Every building was garrisoned with troops instead. These troops had no chance, for how can one win if they cannot skim? The city's sentinel companies were sent off to Okran up in the sky. By about three in the morning, the action was over. There was little money stored away in the barracks, few supplies in the warehouses, and as mentioned, no one to rescue from the rows of cages in the slave mongers. <laughs> they already cleared the place out. They knew something was going to happen. Isaiah commented. Yeah, well that leader of theirs didn't seem too up to speed, Nuke said. No, I suspect he was a pawn in the games of the Holy Phoenix, a game he has lost this day. We're gonna have to drag that Holy Feelers guy out of his hole too, huh? 
Without doubt. We've started something rather serious here. Now we play to win, to the death. His eye was quite right. The Holy Nation had several cities and castles, and most importantly, it had its beloved Holy Phoenix, the spiritual leader of all Ocranites. There was more skimming to come, and presumably more winning. Would that destroy the Nation? Not while the holy fire still burned in the hearts of the faithful citizenry, but some tea to douse that flame would be spilled quite shortly.